R series combinations. When we connect components together, Kirchhoff's laws apply at any instant. So the voltage voltage V, T, across a resistor and capacitor in series is just V series, T, equals VR, T, plus VC, T. However the addition is complicated because the two are not in phase. The next animation makes this clear, they add to give a new sinusoidal voltage, but the amplitude is less than VMR, T, plus VMC, T. Similarly, the AC voltages, amplitude times square root 2, do not add up. This may seem confusing, so it's worth repeating. V series equals VR plus VC but V series VR and VC. This should be clear on the animation and the still graphic below, check that the voltages V, T, do add up, and then look at the magnitudes. The amplitudes and the RMS voltages V do not add up in a simple arithmetical way. Here's where phasor diagrams are going to save us a lot of work. Play the animation again and look at the projections on the vertical axis. Because we have sinusoidal variation in time, the vertical component, magnitude times the sine of the angle it makes with the x-axis, gives us v, t. But the y components of different vectors, and therefore phasors, add up simply, if retotal equals r1 plus r2, then retotal equals re1 plus re2. So v, t, the sum of the y projections of the component phasors, is just the y projection of the sum of the component phasors. So we can represent the three sinusoidal voltages by their phasors. While you're looking at it, check the phases. You'll see that the series voltage is behind the current in phase, but the relative phase is somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees, the exact value depending on the size of VR and VC. We'll discuss phase below. Now let's stop that animation and label the values, which we do in the still figure below. All of the variables, I, VR, VC, V series, have the same frequency F and the same angular frequency omega, so their phasors rotate together, with the same relative phases. So we can freeze it in time at any instant to do the analysis. The convention I use is that the X axis is the reference direction, and the reference is whatever is common in the circuit. In this series circuit, the current is common. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is common, so I would make the voltage the horizontal axis. Be careful to distinguish V and V in this figure. Readers will note that I'm taking a shortcut in these diagrams, the size of the arrows on the phasor diagrams are drawn the same as the amplitudes on the, on the V, T, graphs. However I am just calling them VR, VC etc, rather than VMR, VMR etc. The reason is that the peak values, VMR etc, are rarely used in talking about AC, we use the RMS values, which are peak values times 0.71. Phasor diagrams in RMS have the same shape as those drawn using amplitudes, but everything is scaled by a factor of 0.71 equals 1 slash square root 2. The phasor diagram at right shows us a simple way to calculate the series voltage. The components are in series, so the current is the same in both. The voltage phasors, brown for resistor, blue for capacitor in the convention we've been using, add according to vector or phasor addition, to give the series voltage, the red arrow. By now you don't need to look at V, T, you can go straight from the circuit diagram to the phasor diagram, like this. From Gurus theorem. V2MRC equals V2MR plus V2MC. If we divide this equation by 2 by 2, and remembering that the RMS value V equals VM slash square root 2, we also get. Now this looks like Ohm's law again, V is proportional to I. Their ratio is the series impedance, series, and so for the series circuit. Note the frequency dependence of the series impedance ZRC, at low frequencies, the impedance is very large, because the capacitive reactance 1 slash omega C is large, the capacitor is open circuit for DC. At high frequencies, the capacitive reactance goes to zero, the capacitor doesn't have time to charge up, so the series impedance goes to R. 
At the angular frequency omega equals omega O equals 1 slash RC, the capacitive reactance 1 slash omega C equals the resistance R. We shall show this characteristic frequency on all graphs on this page. Remember how, for two resistors in series, you could just add the resistances, R series equals R1 plus R2 to get the resistance of the series combination. That simple result comes about because the two voltages are both in phase with the current, so their phasors are parallel. Because the phasors for reactances are 90 degrees out of phase with the current, the series impedance of a resistor R and a reactance X are given by Pythagoras' law. Series 2 equals R2 plus X2. Ohm's law in AC. We can rearrange the equations above to obtain the current flowing in this circuit. Alternatively we can simply use the Ohm's law analogy and say that I equals V source slash ZRC. Either way we get. Where current goes to zero at DC, capacitor is open circuit, and to V slash R at high frequencies, no time to charge the, ca the capacitor. So far we have concentrated on the magnitude of the voltage and current. We now derive expressions for their relative phase, so let's look at the phasor diagram again. From simple trigonometry, the angle by which the current leads the voltage is 10 1, VC slash VR, equals 10 1, IXC slash IR, equals 10 1, 1 slash omega RC, equals 10 1, 1 slash 2 pi FRC. However, we shall refer to the angle phi by which the voltage leads the current. The voltage is behind the current because the capacitor takes time to charge up, so phi is negative, i.e. phi equals 10 1, 1 slash omega RC, equals 10 1, 1 slash 2 pi FRC. You may want to go back to the RC animation to check out the phases in time. At low frequencies, the impedance of the series RC circuit is dominated by the capacitor, so the voltage is 90 degrees behind the current. At high frequencies, the impedance approaches R and the phase difference approaches zero. The frequency dependence of Z and phi are important in the applications of RC circuits. The voltage is mainly across the capacitor at low frequencies, and mainly across the resistor at high frequencies. Of course the two voltages must add up to give the voltage of the source, but they add up as vectors. V2RC equals V2R plus V2C. At the frequency omega equals omega O equals 1 slash RC, the phase phi equals 45 degrees and the voltage fractions are VR slash VRC equals VC slash VRC equals 1 slash 2 V1 slash 2 equals 0.71. So, by choosing to look at the voltage across the resistor, you select mainly the high frequencies, across the capacitor, you select low frequencies. This brings us to one of the very important applications of RC circuits.